My name is Dr. Fahd Al Guthmi. I work with the Wildlife Conservation Society, an organization that works to save wildlife and wild places. Uh, my role is to work within the Global Marine Conservation Program and specifically regionally I am based in Kenya and implement a fairly new program called the Miyamba Yetu Sustainable Reef Investments Program. Miyamba Yetu is Swahili for our corals. WCS has been working to conserve the coral and marine resources in both Kenya and Tanzania including the Zanzibari Archipelago. One of our focus areas in Kenya and Tanzania, including the Zanzibari Archipelago, is the proposed transboundary conservation area. Now, this is considered a climate refuge and it hosts uh, biodiversity ranging from mangrove forests, a network of seagrass beds, and, in, and integrated and interconnected coral reefs. The proposed transboundary conservation area is a bi biodiversity hotspot. However, it is still susceptible to other drivers of degradation and stresses. And WCS undertook a threats assessment to determine which one of these threats are a high priority for us to address. The three top threats that we managed to identify included overfishing and destructive fishing, pollution such as wastewater pollution, and plastic pollution. And so the question remains as to how we can be able to address some of these top threats to our precious resources such as the proposed transboundary conservation area and other resilient reefs that line the coastlines of Kenya, Tanzania and the Zanzibari archipelago. And this is what has driven the Global Fund for Coral Reefs to appoint WCS as the convening agent for this region to implement projects that can address drivers of degradation that threaten uh, the coral reef systems in our area. The Global Fund for Coral Reefs was established in 2020 and WCS implemented the Miyamba Yetu program in 2021 and started its activities over the last one and a half years to be able to structure itself and position itself in a way that can address projects in the region effectively. The Global Fund for Coral Reefs aims to create a reef positive investment ecosystem that can address the challenges that I spoke of earlier. It is basically a blended finance solution that has been developed by a coalition or consortium of various global partners that have recognized this as a global threat. So what you can see on this slide is an elaborate illustration of how the GFCR investment ecosystem is structured and how it attempts to address the coral reef funding gap. On the very bottom you can see that there are various suites of solutions and different interventions that can be applied towards conserving our coral reef ecosystems. On the top left side you can see that we have a grant window and the main aim of that grant window is to be able to de-risk and catalyze investments from third party investors and different forms of financing financiers of the program and so the GFCR has been able to run the grant window to be able to attract investments from the right side of this illustration and together the coral reef funding gap is theoretically bridged and solutions at the very bottom are addressed appropriately Within the grant window, there are various instruments that can be used and taken advantage of by the private sector and different project implementers to be able to uh, de-risk and catalyze investments in reef positive businesses. These include guarantees and concessional loans and even technical assistance. On the right side, the GFCR has the investment window which contains impact investments and first loss equity, junior tranches of funds that can be taken advantage of to blend these funds together and apply them towards uh, specific regions such as the one that the Miyamba Yetu program attempts to uh, solve. Moving on from the GFCI investment ecosystem, we now move on to the Miyamba Yetu regional ecosystem that attempts to implement such programs. So the funds move from the GFCR either as grants or investments into our investable solutions and benefit various parties including the government, community benefits and the benefiting businesses that are involved in these transactions and projects. Various uh, first priority um, solutions have been identified and those include blue carbon, um, MPA finance such as ecotourism, uh, fisheries management, waste management and we intend to apply solutions towards these different sectors so that we can bridge that uh, funding gap.
WCS has partnered with Okavango Capital and Conservation Capital who are conservation finance experts and they complement the marine expertise and ecological and social expertise that WCS has to be able to identify the right solutions and interventions to implement within the region. One of the first things that we did as a program to be able to get things moving was setting up our financing mechanisms to be able to deploy said funding to the region. And second of all is pipeline development and scoping to identify the right opportunities for us to invest in. One of which is called the Kwanini Foundation and Manta Resort Project, which involves MPA finance with the ecotourism sector. How it works is financing the high-end resort that exists in the northwestern side of Pemba Island through a senior debt while supporting the community in co-managing activities within the marine space in front of the resort to undertake patrolling and surveillance and whatnot through a grant. So by pairing or rather blending this deal through a debt and a grant, we're able to ensure that communities are supported, livelihoods are supported, there is payment for ecosystem services and the resort also benefits from scaling up its business model and earning a higher revenue that they can then share with the foundation. This is only one pilot project of several that we've been looking at um, and others involve waste management such as waste to value treatment plant support and ecotourism in different areas within the region plus plastic pollution that we're also exploring to support within MPAs. This is just a brief snapshot of what Miyambayetu is all about, but there holds so much potential for a program of this nature within the Wayo region, specifically within Kenya, Tanzania and Zanzibar, but we have to meet specific criteria for us to be able to implement these projects. The most important one being a direct or indirect line to coral reefs, and that is resilient coral reefs. Secondly is community benefits, which is very important and a priority for us, especially because they rely and have their livelihoods dependent on these ecosystems and thirdly the sustainable element there has to be some sort of sustainable finance element involved in it so that we can see a, a, a long-term impact and a long-term ability for these projects to sustain themselves for the indefinite future another thing that we're also looking at is a strong partnership with the governments to be able to support their agendas and also be able to drive the program more effectively last but not least I also want to acknowledge that we do recognize that there are various stakeholders and development partners actively working on the ground to support communities, marine ecosystems, and we also want to take advantage of that opportunity to collaborate and collaborate and co-finance and, and possibly get co-funding opportunities with them to drive that impact and, and, uh, and, and the coral reef positive investment ecosystem even further than initially envisioned.